It's a little Friday college baseball talk on the No Poll Podcast. I'm Ian Nicholas, joined by fellow freshman Andrew Selver and Adam Cohen. First of all, I think we're the best looking crew. Maybe not from the neck up, but from the neck down. Did a little bit of convincing guys in the hoodie suit look. But regardless, Andrew, you were the pioneer of college baseball talk here. You convinced our EP, Liam Griffin, to talk a little bit about your favorite sport. Just tell the people at home how passionate you are about the game of college baseball. Can't wait to get going here, Ian. College baseball, it's the best time of year. I would argue that this is the second best college athletics tournament outside of March Madness. I would say that the 64 team bracket in college baseball, the road to Omaha, the College World Series rivals March Madness, and I would put it second best tournament in all of college athletics, even ahead of the college football playoff. So I'm super stoked to get talking college baseball here halfway through the season. That's someone from Atlanta, Georgia, telling you that college baseball trumps college football. That's all I'm hearing Ooh, right now. Holy. Anyways, also, in a little bit of MLB action, it's also Jackie Robinson Day. Guys, you know he actually he played baseball at UCLA. It was the worst of his four sports. He had under 100 at UCLA. But, hey, I don't think that mattered in the grand scheme of things. Andrew, we know how much you love the game of college baseball what's your favorite memory uh got a lot of them grew up watching uh georgia tech got to rep the yellow jackets here of course um and watching the vanderbilt commodores um had an uncle who played at vanderbilt grew up about a mile away from georgia tech's campus so my dad used to take me to all the georgia tech games um my uh extended family had season tickets to vanderbilt so i've grown up going to those games um my mom surprised me with a trip to the College World Series when I was eight years old in wow. 2011 to go watch the Commodores play in the College World Series up in Omaha, TD Ameritrade Stadium, and that was a pretty special moment. Got to see Vanderbilt win two national champions national championships. I guess sorry, this guy likes Vanderbilt. In the last uh, <laughs> just a little bit. Last ten years, so uh, pretty exciting. And then this past year, got to see Vanderbilt and Georgia Tech play each other twice in the playoffs up in Nashville, so uh, that was exciting, but a lot of favorite college baseball memories growing yeah, up. Yeah, a lot of memories. I remember yeah. seeing that on your Snapchat story, too, really flexing off your college baseball fandom. Adam, how about you? Um, I unfortunately am not like Andrew. I have not had the chance to go to any college baseball <laughs> games, um, really seen a lot of college baseball, so I went yesterday. I did a little bit of research, found some top, uh, top events that have gone on over college baseball's uh, storied, franchise, uh, storied history. And I picked out my favorite memory, and that's the 2008 Fresno State Championship win. Um, so it's a bit of a Cinderella story. They won the Wax automatic bid uh -huh. um, and got a four seed, but were not supposed to make it out of the regional tournament. Made the run, got slaughtered by Arizona State, but because the tournament is double elimination, oh, double elimination were able right. to uh, sneak their way into the College World Series, and they eventually took down the Georgia Bulldogs for the trophy. Yeah, they did. My favorite memory, it has to be with Vanderbilt. And also, like you, Adam, I've never attended a game in person. Yale and UConn a little too far away in my Connecticut home mm -hmm. to travel up and watch some college baseball. My favorite memory, though, when the New York Mets drafted Kamar Rocker, and I know, Adam, you happen to root for the Mets. How many games we're, do you expect him to play? Real, we're really going to start here. We're, we're going to start here. We're, 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 yeah. we're three and a half minutes in. We're going we're gonna to go here. I'm happy you can look <laughs> at the timer. Yeah, I mean, because the time Kumar's going to spend in the Mets uniform, not whole, A whole zero minutes and zero seconds. I think he's great at Vanderbilt, though. He was great at Vanderbilt. Doesn't mean he's going to do anything for the Egg, Mets. Exactly. Well, Speak. I, I don't care about the Mets, to be honest. Of course he was you fantastic don't. at Vanderbilt. Yeah, he probably thinks the MLB is rigged anyway. <laughs> but uh, let's stick with Vanderbilt. Unranked right now, your favorite team, Andrew. Nope. No more Jack Leiter. No more Kumar Rocker. Nope. He's not healthy. He's not playing college baseball anymore. Yep. Is this a retool or a rebuild for your favorite team? Tell us why. So I wouldn't say that Vanderbilt's necessarily like out of the conversation here. I think everybody's moving a little too fast. Obviously, the Commodores unranked for the first time since uh, May 28th in 2018. Ooh. So that's pretty shocking to see. But Vanderbilt's 23-9. and nine. I mean, we can't overreact here that the Vanderbilt Commodores, just because they're unranked for one week, we can't say, oh, this isn't a championship contender. Certainly, they lost their two best pitchers, and that hurt them. they got to be starting guys like Carter Holton, a freshman, on Saturdays in the SEC. That's pretty tough to do. But this team is head coached by Tim Corbin. I mean, this guy knows how to figure things out. He's been 
head of the program for almost two decades. He's taken them to numerous College World Series. As I said, two championships. This guy knows how to get the best out of his players at the most important time. It's not about peaking in April. It's about peaking in June. And I think that's what we might see out of Vanderbilt this year. I don't think they're at risk of missing the tournament or anything. Certainly, they might not host a regional this year. But I think that the Vanderbilt Commodores are not anybody wants to are not a team anybody wants to see in the playoffs this year. Adam, is this a team that you see people being scared of come playoff time, or do you see them being I'm in the middle looking, of nowhere? I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a statistic right now. Five and seven in SEC play. That's mm. not great to start it off. Tennessee's twelve and zero. Yeah, they are. Um, well, not anymore. They lost last night. They uh, wasn't in conference though. So. <laughs> um, I, I mean, uh, look. Correct. It ah, is, gotcha. Is this Vanderbilt team championship contenders? I don't know. Right now, it doesn't look like it. They went 18-2 and two out of conference, played up to the level out of conference. Once the SEC hit, they did not seem to be able to run with the best of them. And if you want to win the chip, you got to be able to run with the best of them. I mean, this team lost the rest two starting pitchers. They lost four of their starting lineup from last year. But... I mean, it's obviously going to take them a little while to get back to full speed. But is that this year, though? Because obviously, you think it's this year. I think it is. They need guys like uh, Parker Nolan, Carter Young, Tate Colwick. They need to step up offensively. Those are guys who are returning from last year who were starting in the lineup, all batting under 300, and they were batting over 300 last year. I think once those guys get back in the full swing of things, once these younger players get more uh, reps and Enrique Bradfield Jr. I mean, there's no better guy to be batting leadoff in the country. This guy is unbelievable. He's the best center fielder defensively in the country. Once he's on first base, he's practically on third base. <laughs> he steals all the bases on the field, stolen home before. He's almost impossible to throw out on the base pass. And so he's a very dangerous leadoff hitter that I think any team in college baseball would want right now. Adam, and I you, think you that seem makes like you want to jump contender. in here. I mean, look, Vanderbilt will always remind me of the Patriots, the Dodgers is the type of, they're, they're the powerhouse of college baseball. But they seem to be going through a gap year, yeah? I mean, recruiting-wise, I'm looking through it. Over the past couple years, their classes have gotten eaten alive by the MLB draft. Yep. Like guys by the name of Robert Hassel III, who was drafted by the Cubs, Pete Crow Armstrong was drafted by my Mets and then traded to the Cubs. Um, <laughs> Jordan Lawler, Joshua Baez, Michael Morales were all guys who went to the draft last year and got signed. Is that an issue to you that, I mean, there are a lot of guys getting scooped up by the draft? I think it is. I think it's one thing that Vanderbilt and Tim Corbin were doing a good job of, and they've fallen off in the past few years of getting guys that they knew were coming to college baseball, and now they're starting to lose guys. There's guys I'd be concerned about if I were them in this next year's draft. Drew Jones, son of Andrew Jones, is one to look, keep an eye on. I would be shocked. He's currently committed to Vanderbilt. I'd be shocked if he ends up with the Commodores and not in the draft. So I think that's something that this team has fallen off of in the past few years. But... I mean, they got a guy like Carter Holton right now who was going to be a third-round draft pick. Kumar Rocker, that guy would have been a first-round draft pick, but he committed to the Vanderbilt Commodores, and everybody knew not to draft him. So He still was a first-round draft pick. He, he, he was eventually, but he would have been out of high school had he wanted to go to the draft. Yeah. So I think this Vanderbilt team is still doing well recruiting-wise, just maybe falling off a little bit. So that's the thing you got to adjust to as a program. Vanderbilt's been a great team for, for a long time Certainly now, is. but you've got to get adjusted yep. to guys leaving your program constantly. We see it now always in college sports. You can leave the field when you're younger and younger, and you can go pro, make a bunch of money. These guys, they want to come to Vanderbilt, and they want to establish themselves on a national level. But a lot of these guys are coming to Vanderbilt, and they're already super talented. Yeah. They're just doing their time before they can make it to the next level. So that's something that I also think you've got to account for. I think we'll move on. Uh, unless, Andrew, you got one quick thing yeah, you I want to touch on the SEC. Just, the whole I think too. what hurt Vanderbilt is that Jack Leiter was a draftable sophomore. I mean, typically players have to stay three years in college. He was able to go two because of his age. So I think had he had to stay one extra year at Vanderbilt, then this team has Leiter starting on Fridays, McIlvain on Saturdays, and Holton on Sundays. It's a much different starting lineup there. But that kind of hurt them this year. But I still think they're a playoff team. 
They're a playoff team, but in an SEC conference where eight teams are ranked in the top 25, we already touched on the Commodores' record of 5-7 and seven in conference play. They are beaten up on each other. The one team that hasn't been beaten up, though, we just touched on them, Tennessee. Andrew, is there any team in this conference outside of Tennessee, and since we've talked so much about Vanderbilt, outside of Vanderbilt as well, that really has a chance to take down the, uh, the Volunteers? I think there certainly is. I mean, my thing with Tennessee, unbelievable start to the year. I, it was a record-setting start to the year in the SEC, and this team just lost their just their second game of the year in the midweek against Tennessee Tech this week. But... I'm concerned about the Volunteers peaking too early. I would compare it to Auburn in basketball, uh -huh. when that team was off to an incredibly hot start, and then it kind of fell off in the end. One of the things that concerns me about this Tennessee team is their three weekend starters, two freshmen and a sophomore. Certainly a lot of experience in this Tennessee batting lineup, but I would be concerned come postseason that this team has no experience on the bump with postseason play. I don't think this is a Tennessee team that makes the College World Series. Wow, that's a, that's a hot take right there. One thing I do want to mention before we really deep dive into the rest of the SEC, there's one team on here that's not ranked um, and isn't being talked about, and yet they're the defending national champions. The Mississippi State Bulldogs are 19 and 15 overall right now after going 50 and 18 last year and taking on the chip. I just think it's a little bit of an interesting note. Um, but as for Tennessee, I, I'd, I'd love to say you're wrong. I, I can't see the future, so I'm not going to. And you probably know college baseball a little better than I do. A little bit. Uh, it's just a little bit, maybe, I don't know. No, 13, but stick to your guns, Adam. 13 what do we to 14 think here? years, it sounds like. Um, Tennessee's still 31-2. and two. They are? They're number one. I mean, they took down a number one ranked um, Texas team. Oh, actually, nope. They took a loss to a number one ranked mm -hmm. Texas team. Um, but Drew Beam has a 1.14 ERA. Nice. Chase Burns has a, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, hold on. Ch yeah, Chase Burns. We know has we need to get the numbers right. I, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a numbers here. guy. Chase Burns is a 1.51 ERA. I mean, they've got yeah. two really good guys. I compare them to Max Scherzer and Jacob DeGrom for the Mets because that's just what I do. But they've got two really good starters. Yeah. My thing with those two is they're both freshmen, and I'm concerned come playoff time that they're not going to be able to handle the pressure. This is a team in uh, Tennessee that made the College World Series last year, but they almost lost an opening round game in their regional to four-seed Wright State, and once they made the Super Regional, it was a pretty easy path through not the best LSU team. So I don't think they make it back to Omaha this year, and I'm not sure that they win the SEC championship either. But a lot of people might say that this, the team that would upset them in the SEC is Arkansas. I, no, that's a team I want to talk about. Nope. Ne no, hold not on. happening. Not happening. Arkansas. Are you going to come up here and tell me the top team in the West, team yep. that's only lost three of 24 games at home, nine and four in the conference, yep. you're telling me Nick Luttrell's favorite squad, Arkansas, is not going to stand a chance? Nope. I mean, can uh, you give me a valid Nick, reason? Nick or? Luttrell might want to shut his ears right now, but the Arkansas Razorbacks will never Win a national championship never. under Dave never. Van Horn. Under Dave okay. Van Horn, head what coach, is your hatred? They will for never this, win a national championship. Did they, he? Did he spit in your you face? Ready? You ready? Did they tell you you couldn't root for Vanderbilt. Yeah, in, 20, beat Vanderbilt. in 2018, they had their opportunity to win a national championship. Up one, game two, up a game against Oregon State in the finals. Two outs and they missed an easy pop fly and foul territory. You're going to talk about a pop on, fly from four years ago they go and say that's the reason they will never win. They go on to lose that game when they were one out away from a national championship, lost game three, and the Beavers were dogpiling. And that was their last hope. Last year, they had the best team in college baseball, no doubt. Golden Spikes Award winner Kevin Copps on the mound. And what does Dave Van Horn do? What does he do? Up in the Super Regionals against NC State, up a game, in game two, they're down a run. He goes out and puts his best pitcher in to try and close out a game that they're losing. He wastes two innings with Kevin Copps on Saturday. They lose that game anyways. He but comes you want back, to throw in the towel? He comes back Sunday, and he starts Kevin Copps. He tries to get him to go all nine innings, and in the ninth inning, he gives up a go-ahead home run 
that would end up being the game winner and eliminate Arkansas because Dave Van Horn tried to pitch his best pitcher 11 innings in two days. Okay, he'll so never, he'll never you, get you it done with the Razorbacks. People can't learn from their previous nope. mistakes. I mean, Adam, does this Arkansas team or any team in the West? have the ability to make a run regardless of how good or bad or how much Andrew likes or dislikes their manager? <laughs> I mean, does Arkansas stand a chance? I, I, look, I don't know if they're going to be the team to take down Tennessee. I really I don't know that. But I definitely think they can come back from last season's tourney meltdown. They have three, at least according to MLB.com, top 40 draft prospects in Robert Moore, Peyton Paulette, and Caden Wallace. Uh, Robert Moore and Paulette haven't been great. I think Paulette's hurt. Uh, but Caden Wallace has been out of this world. Jalen Battles is great. Um, and the pitching staff is really, really solid. The team as a whole is hitting around 280 and is pitching to a 3-6 ERA, which is nothing to scoff at. Not to mention, these guys can field. Third best fielding percentage in the country. I, I certainly think if you fix all the facets of the game, you can pull something off. Don't get me wrong. A very talented Arkansas team, currently ranked sixth. They will never get it done in the postseason, though. Okay. I do think, okay. though, in the SEC that the Auburn Tigers are a team to look out for. Just jumped up into the rankings uh -huh. this week. They just lost by one last night to Mississippi State 7-6. But they're 23-11 and on the year, 7-6 and in the best conference in college baseball, without a doubt. They have series wins over Vanderbilt, LSU, Texas A&M, which are all three top programs in the SEC. And they got a guy by the name of Sonny. Dichiaria. Who's that? Batting 430, batting, fo batting 11 home runs, and 32 RBIs. One of the best batting averages in any conference among any team in college baseball. So I think that the Auburn Tigers, they're getting hot. They're heating up. I think that they go on a little run here to the end of the season. I wouldn't be shocked to see them upset Tennessee. Okay. What about the teams out west? Let's move to a conference that's not as loaded. We could talk about the SEC all day, yeah, we but do. we have a whole country to talk about. Let's talk <laughs> about somewhere a little warmer. Only four teams in the Pac-12 that are ranked despite the great conditions. But I'm riding with Arizona right now. I mean, I know it's easy to say the top team in the conference is, is going to make a deep run. 11-5 and five in Pac-12 play, 24-10 and 10 overall. They can win close games. They have uh, four guys who have hit 25 RBIs or more. Chase Davis, Daniel Susak, Tanner Otremba. These are guys who can not only hit for power, but hit for average as well. I don't know what you guys think. In a conference that isn't as strong, but to me, I think Arizona is the team to watch out for. I think they do have the ability to compete with these teams in the SEC. Maybe not all of them, but I do think the Pac-12 is starting to, you know, put together a solid resume here and there. And, and Adam, I don't know what you think, but do you think Arizona's got I'm, a good I'm chance gonna, to prove me right? I'm going to eliminate uh, the Oregon State pick because that's, that's easy. I'd love to say Oregon State's going to give every team a run for their money. They're good. Everybody knows that. They're ranked number three for a reason. team that I want to look at is UCLA. Their pitching staff is out of this world. Number two in the country with a 2.84 ERA. They're batting, not great, 2.63, uh, .263 e, uh, Team BA, but to be honest, that pitching is what's going to carry them. Thatcher Hurd leads the group with an ERA of 106 in 34 innings pitch, which, are, which is great, and opponents are only hitting 138 against him. If any team is going to give Oregon State a run for their money, Tennessee a run for their money, or we'll get to Miami later. If any team's going to give that top three a run for their money, give me UCLA. Is it UCLA? Is the pitching staff just too good, or does this team have more flaws, and they're just not well-rounded enough to make that deeper run? I don't know. UCLA is a good team, but they really haven't been able to get anything done in the postseason in quite a while now. They won the 2013 College World Series. They haven't been back to Omaha since then. And they've had plenty of talented teams. They were n the number one overall seed in the country back in 2019 when they lost at home in a Super Regional to Michigan. So what's holding them back? So I, I think it's more the offense that's holding them back in the past few years. They've always had the talent in the pitching staff and in the bullpen. They just haven't been able to produce runs when they need them most. I'm not sure that they'll be able to get it done. But also, I'm not sure that Oregon State or Arizona are the team this year in the Pac-12. I haven't seen enough out of Oregon State, to be honest. They haven't played a lot of competition yet. They went one and two against Stanford. Their last two series of the year are against UCLA and Arizona. So I'm interested to see how they fare there. 
But my team to look out for is the Stanford Cardinal, another team that made the College World Series last year in addition to Arizona. They're always experienced, well coached. They, they were swept by Arizona the, earlier this year, but then they won two or three against Oregon State. They won last night nine to one over UCLA. We'll see how they fare the rest of the weekend against the Bruins, but I think that's a team trending in the right direction. So Adam, he just comes off the bat and says the third best team, Oregon State. He hasn't seen enough out of them. I know you already said you weren't going to talk about the Beavers, but I'm going to bring you back in here. Is this Oregon State team better than the 2018 squad, or, or does this team actually live up to the hype? As an Oregon Ducks fan talking about the Oregon State Beavers, it, it hurts just a little bit. Oh, so you're an AP uh. on Con Box show, and now all of a sudden <laughs> You're an just, Oregon fan from New Jersey? I've always been an Oregon Ducks fan, okay. man. There's nothing like watching college basketball at 1 a.m. <laughs> nothing like it. Okay. Um, Is it those look, uniforms that draw you in or it's, what? It's just the fact that... I mean, uh, he likes the bright colors. It, yeah, I mean, look, the Ducks have great uniforms, great stadiums. I mean, Oregon's got some incredible athletic facilities. But we're, we're not here to talk about them. Um, the 2018 19. Oregon State Beavers were a ridiculous team. Let's, let's not get that twisted. Adley Rutschman, mm -hmm. I, I don't need to say more. Adley Rutschman, 407 batting average, drove in 81 He's one of runs. the best players to come through the Oregon State program ever. ever. And not to mention, <laughs> he was the number one overall draft pick the next year. Golden Spikes Award winner and some other uh, awards. And he quickly flew through the Orioles system. You know what I found out yesterday? You know Stephen Kwan, the rookie who's lighting it up for the uh, Cleveland Guardians right now? Yeah. He was on the Oregon State Beavers. He was on that 2018 team with Nick Madrigal. I, I was dumbfounded, absolutely flabbergasted when I read that. I was like, really? This guy coming out of nowhere? But yeah. So looking at that, offensively, that team hit um, 312, uh, 321, which is really, really good. That would be top in the league right now. And they had a team ERA of 3.28, which is pretty solid. I would not say this year's Oregon State team is better than that Oregon State team. I wouldn't either. I mean, that team won a national championship, partly because, you know, the Arkansas Razorbacks choked it away. Okay. But yeah, I don't think this four is Four years ago. Oregon State was I still... It, they were. They were a top five team all season long that year. And I wouldn't say that this team even rivals that. They have, the, they have tremendous talent, but I don't think they'll get back um, to the, even to the final series in Omaha, maybe not even to Omaha. All right, well, we'll go from the middle of the country. Well, we were out west. Omaha's in the middle. Let's go back out east. ACC, we've got Miami at the top of the pecking order there. They're the only team with double-digit wins in the conference, 13-3 and three against conference play. But they haven't won it all since 2001. None of us were alive, by the way, when that happened. <laughs> Do they make something happen this year? Or, Andrew, is, is this Miami team just in the ACC? They're just beating down on ACC teams that don't stack up to SEC level, Pac-12 level. Or is this a legitimate hurricane squad? I'd be careful there. I think the ACC is one of the most talented conferences. I would put them second, right behind wow. the SEC this season. A lot of talented teams that you have to watch out for come tournament time. But... This Miami Hurricanes team, certainly off to a hot start. Do I think they're going to win a national championship? No. Why? Because they don't have all-around experience in the playoffs. They haven't been there before like some of these other programs that are consistently making the College World Series. But is that your only reasoning as to why? I mean, you said oh, that it's, before. It's, but it's hard it? to win a national championship in college baseball. Really hard. Typically, you see teams that have been to the College World Series recently and have experience in the playoffs winning. But this team certainly has the capability, in my opinion, to get to Omaha. They have the pitching. They have the hitting. They have the coaching staff. They have what it takes. They lost last night 12-5 to to Virginia Tech. Doesn't look great. But they're coming off three straight sweeps of UNC, Virginia, and Duke. I mean, that's hard to do in the ACC, mm -hmm. to sweep a team once. To do three, have three straight weekend sweeps, it's impressive. I think this Miami team is a contender to make it to the College World Series. Adam, you think they're inexperienced, and you're, you're, you're giggling already. It's, you think, it's, what a, do you think? it's a mix of inexperience, and as a Mets fan, I was raised on pitching, pitching, pitching. I grew up watching Matt Harvey, Noah Syndergaard, Jacob deGrom, and all those guys. I even got to watch a little Pedro Martinez and Johan Santana towards the end. Um, Miami doesn't have the pitching. They just yep. don't have the pitching. They don't have the depth. They have a team ERA of 3.78, which college baseball is on the lower end. And for a number two team in the country, you, you need to pitch better than that. Like, if, if you can't pitch 
you're, you're not going anywhere. I think they're a team that falls off a little bit in the end of the season, but I still think they're hosting a regional, potentially oh, even a super a doubt. regional. I agree. I think that ERA is a little bit concerning, and combined with your point of the inexperience, I think especially when you've got pitchers who can't really get the job done, inexperienced pitching, which is already not that good, that just seems like a recipe for disaster in my opinion. But looking at the rest of a conference as a whole, I know you already touched on Virginia Tech a little bit, Andrew, and you said that win didn't look great, but Virginia Tech in their own right is still one of the top teams in this conference. Oh, they have any sleeper doubt. potential, or is this just you know one big-time win? You said no doubt. I think this is a team that you also have to watch out for come May and June to make it to the Supers and even to the College World Series. Wow. This team can hit the baseball mm. flat out. They can? They got seven <laughs> players batting above 300. I mean, that's unheard of in college baseball. Usually a team in the top of their conference has maybe four or five. This team has seven guys batting above 300, two above 400. I would be careful with this Virginia Tech team come playoff time, I think they could get hot at the right time. And another team I would really uh, say has a chance this year is Notre Dame. Mm. That's a team that you wouldn't maybe expect to be at the top of the college baseball landscape. They're kind of new bloods in the college baseball landscape. But last year, they were one game away from going to the College World Series. They lost in three games to Mississippi State in the Super Regionals, who ended up winning the whole thing. And they lost their best hitter in Nico Cavadas, but this team is back. They got J.M. Bertrand as their ace, one of the best pitchers in the ACC. I think that the Notre Dame fighting Irish, I think they're going to Omaha. I mean, look, one thing about Notre Dame is no matter what sport, don't count them out. Nope. It's Notre Dame. They're going to have guys <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, um, those gold helmets. But, but I, I look at Virginia, Louisville, and Notre Dame all in a row, 8-9-10 eight, nine, eight, nine, uh, rank-wise. Um, and to be honest, if I were to rank those teams – Virginia at one, Notre Dame at two, and Louisville a far and away three. Yeah. Um, Virginia and Notre Dame are very similar teams. Notre Dame is more pitching heavy, um, and Virginia is a little more uh, offense heavy. But to be honest, they're very, very balanced and very similar teams. Those are the teams that I'm looking at to make a run big time. For sure. And, I mean, one thing I would love to harp on for the ACC this year it's an incredibly deep conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I put it up there right next to the a SEC because when you look at the Atlantic, Louisville, Notre Dame, Wake Forest, NC State, Florida State is fifth in the Atlantic, a perennial power in the Seminoles, a team that's uh, going to the College World Series probably once every five years. That team is the fifth in the Atlantic. And then you look at Georgia Tech, second last in the Coastal, North Carolina, third last in the Coastal. Those are two teams that I can see making it to the playoffs and contending to make it to the Super Regionals. I mean, it's an incredibly deep conference. And, that, I mean, these teams are continually week in, week out, beating up on each other. I mean, you guys are so quick to shoot down Louisville. I mean, maybe just a quick reason as to why. I mean, this is a team with a great record in the ACC. I know they've had a couple of really so-so performances as of late, but they won two or three against North Carolina. I think they've got a decent pitching staff, maybe not any world beaters, but guys who can maybe get the jobs on a lot of guys who have wins on their resume. And I know win-loss in baseball doesn't mean the whole Shadil, the whole shebang. I mean, Adam, you're looking at me like I'm a crazy man possessed, but why does Louisville stand zero chance whatsoever. They have the win so far. We've already said the ACC is a great conference, uh, and it's apparently the second best conference of the nation, according to this guy. So, so why am I nuts? Pitching, pitching, pitching. A team with a five ER, an ERA above five, I, I cannot put any faith behind. They remind me of, and I have it written here, a uh, collegiate twins team because they're very offensive built. They've got uh, Team BA of three, uh, 321, which is really, really good. They've got a lot of guys batting above uh, 300, usually in the 330 range. They've got power in a lot of places. Offensively, they are sound and set. Pitching-wise, it's a disaster. And as somebody who, yeah, you mentioned wins don't matter pitching-wise, and yeah, Jacob DeGrom proved that in 2018. <laughs> These guys, they, they can't really pitch that well. They can't, and I think I wouldn't rule out the Cardinals. I okay. think, I mean, there we go. I think that they can contend for an ACC title, but I also would say I think there's eight or ten teams in the ACC that could win the ACC championship this year. I'm glad I'm not picking the ACC champion because I think it's potentially top to bottom 
deepest conference in college baseball because the SEC certainly has eight in the top 25, but top to bottom, ACC is right up there with them. I think the Cardinals are a good team, but I don't know. It's going to be hard to win this conference. All right, let's go to a conference that you've got to be able to root for. The Missouri Valley Conference. Oh, and we're their, really getting into it their now. Their top dog, the one and only Dallas Baptist. They're a top 20 team right now outside of playing in this little-known conference. 16th in the nation. Has this team the real deal? I mean, they're 4-1 and one in their last five against ranked opponents. They have four guys hitting at least 300. Andrew, you're smiling already. Is Dallas Baptist the real deal? Or are they just a legitimate team at all? I'm not even going to ask you how deep a run they can make. I'm just asking you, is this a program to watch out for? Ian, you're an avid baseball, college baseball fan, right? Uh, I mean, you know, you can now test me there. But, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Never you been you to a ever, game. You ever heard of Dallas? played baseball. You ever heard of Dallas Baptist baseball? I've heard of Dallas Baptist, period, but no, not before, not before this year. Yeah, Dallas Baptist, people might not know it if you're just paying attention to college baseball now. This team is a perennial power in the Missouri Valley Conference. They're winning it almost every year. Dallas Baptist has only missed the NCAA tournament once in the last 10 years. I mean, it's not like this team is a new new team to look out for. But now they're ranked. They Why are, are they ranked they, now? Is it They've been ranked talent? in the past. It, it's not really... I think it's just more recognition as they keep continually performing in the playoffs. Last year, they, they made it to the Super Regionals. They were one win away from going to the College World Series for the first time ever in program history. And this is a team that they're the only D1 team at their school. All the other teams are D2. D3, yeah. um, but that. I think this team and Southern Miss, two teams in the top 25 right now, that if you're not tuning in every year to college baseball, you might not have heard about. But those are two teams from mid-major conferences that are annually on the, in the playoffs contending to get to the World Series. Uh, Southern Miss been there before. Dallas Baptist looking to get back, get to the College World Series into Omaha for the first time this year. I wouldn't be shocked to see it happen. I mean, could this team be a, a right squad, like the one back in 2003 yeah. that was able to go all the way? I'm not going to say that squad? DBU's going to win the national championship here. Let's not go that far. But do they have the but, talent, or is it yes. more they just play the game nope. the right way? No, nope. they have the talent, and I think that they can certainly make the Super Regionals, if not go to the World Series for the first time. I mean, they got wins over Maryland, La Tech, and a, and, uh, a sweep of Southern Miss this sure. year. And they, they lost by one run to Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State, who are all top 10, top 15 teams. So this team, I think you got to watch out for it come playoff time. Adam, I'll go to you here. So what makes this team special? What's going to set them up to make that deep run? Or do you disagree? Do you think they're, they're posers? Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you completely here. Um, I, I just I can't back a team. Uh, again, pitching, pitching, pitching. I can't back a team with, a four, with an ERA above 4-5. I just can't do it. And look. They, they play in the Missouri Valley Conference, which is why it, it almost baffles me that their ERA as a team is so high. Because the Missouri Valley Conference, they're not, it's not a deep conference. Um, and most of those ranked wins, when they beat Maryland, when they beat uh, Louisiana Tech, and I think they beat TCU, they were all like ranked number 20, 21, and 25. So somewhere. fraudulent ranked wins, you're saying? I mean, yeah, like on the edge ranked wins type thing. So, I, I mean, they, they remind me a little bit of a team uh, two spots ahead of them in Gonzaga. Um, Gonzaga is a little better offensively and a little better pitching-wise, but same deal. At a conference, not doing much, and yet they're ranked in the top 15. I'm excited. You talk about Gonzaga. I'm excited they play two games coming up next week against Oregon State. I'm Four excited vowels, to baby. see how they fare in that. Mm -hmm. Any other non-Power non 5 teams that you're looking for this season? Well, I mean, non-Power 5 is a pretty obvious answer, and it's Southern Miss. Yep. I mean, they're a perennial powerhouse. I was researching them uh, last night, and they've, they've really done a lot um, over the yep. past 10, 15 years, a lot of CUSA championships, yep. um, and I think a College World Series appearance in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, so they've, they've got a lot going on. Uh, they are a very good team, but they're much more pitching-centric, yep. which... I love yeah. and they've got the bats to back it up enough that I think they're the team out of conference that can make a run. Andrew I'm just gonna ask you a quick question yep. here because you're the college baseball guy he keeps talking about ERAs obviously yep. it's important tell us in the college game what is 
an average team ERA? Because we've heard 4-5, no bueno, 5, no bueno. If you had to stick a middle in the country and say that team has an average ERA, what would you say it is? Probably in the 3.5 to 4 area of, right. of, of average teams. I mean, if we're talking top 25 teams, it's typically closer to 3 or below. But, gotcha. Um, I would say, going back to kind of in majors, I would talk Texas State Bobcats, another team to look out for. They came on out of nowhere. They haven't made the t tournament in 10 years, and they got wins over Arizona and Texas. Look out for them. My one thing I would add while we're talking about these smaller teams out of smaller conferences, lesser known, if they're in the top 16, they're hosting a regional. Yeah. It's always tricky for these teams to get out of their own regional and make it to the super regional because it's a lot of pressure that they haven't faced before, and they're going up against teams that are from good conferences like the ACC that are coming to their place and a lot of times beating up on them. Look at last year, Old Dominion, LA Tech, both hosted regionals. Both didn't make it out of their own regional because teams like Virginia and NC State took them down. So I, it's always interesting to see how these smaller teams fare. And Adam, I got a question for you. We're talking about smaller teams, lesser known teams. Oh, God. Rutgers. Rutgers. Out of your state. Your okay. Thoughts. All right. So, so you knew I was going to get here eventually. We're skipping ahead a little bit because he was he was with me last night. We were chatting about the rundown, uh -huh. and um, he was like, uh, we were talking sleeper teams, and uh, I have Rutgers. I have my Scarlet Knights uh, out of Newark, New Jersey. These guys. <laughs> the accent. These guys. <laughs> these guys are great. Twenty-seven and six overall. Eight and one conference record. And yes. The Big Ten is They're not playing nobody. The Big Ten is not a baseball nope, conference. They we'll, stink. we'll start there, okay? Michigan was good a few years ago. Maryland was ranked at some point this season. Rutgers is really, really good. They're a great fielding team. They've got some speed. They've got some power, and they've got some pitching. They've got good pitching. Like Rutgers is a good team, and to be honest, if that's where I see my first college baseball game in the playoffs. I'm more than okay man. with it. We're going to leave it there. We're just going to say Andrew hates them because they play in a nothing conference. Let's talk about a team that doesn't even exist, though. Yep. Syracuse. <laughs> There's no baseball team here. We have no. softball. Shout out to Anthony Vasquez, the beat reporter. But there is no baseball. So let's just have a little fun here. Andrew, let's just say hypothetically your favorite player in the country wanted to come play for Syracuse. No reasoning. Maybe just, you know, John Wildhack throwing him the NIL bag. What would you, who would you want to play for Syracuse baseball? We're talking one guy here, or are we talking a whole list? Because I can give you a whole You know what, I just want to give you one guy, because you can give me a All list right. full yep. of reasons why you want this one guy. I'll give you two guys. Oh, okay. I got, I got one out of Vanderbilt, Enrique Bradfield Jr. You already talked about him. Yep, mm -hmm. there's nobody else you'd rather have weeding off in, in your lineup and playing center field. Mm -hmm. He covers half the outfield out there. Best defender in the outfield in all of college baseball. And he plays the game the right way, in my opinion. Okay. He's all about getting on base, whether it be bunting, whether it be hitting against the shift. All about getting on base because once he's on base, he knows he can make things happen with his feet. And the other I'll give you is Kevin Parada out of Georgia Tech. And I know of I'm course. picking my two teams here. I yeah, know. Exactly. I was going to say. I'll tell you about Kevin Parada, and that's because Georgia Tech is – the best team in the country at developing catchers. And that might sound interesting. People have called them catcher you. They got Jason Veritek, Weeders, Joey Bart, all out of Georgia Tech. And that's because at Georgia Tech, they develop them to call their own games. And that's something you rarely see in the college game these days. We got teams putting in signs through wristbands to tell their pitcher what to pitch. Uh -huh. And at Georgia Tech, you got your, own, your catcher calling his own game. And that's something that Scouts love to see you, let alone this guy can flat out hit. So that's another guy that I would love to have here at Syracuse. Adam, you got one guy. He stole a couple of guys. I mean, he's, he's, got, got, he's got a couple. Um, Who's your guy? My guy, if I got to take one guy, um, it's going to be uh, Jake Jalloff out yep. of Virginia. Um, Ryan I, I, Nelson, our sports director, huge fan. Of but why Jalloff. are you a huge fan of him? I mean, he's, he's very good. The kid can hit. And if, if you're going to be playing first base on my Syracuse Orange squad, you, you better be able to hit. 388 uh, batting average this season, 14 home runs and 54 RBIs in 33 games. 
He's having a heck of a season, and he's somebody I would definitely look into trying to snatch away from an ACC rival if Syracuse uh, ever gets a baseball team. You know who I would want? Yeah. I want Kumar Rocker. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Well, in all seriousness, I'll be working over the summer for uh, the Amsterdam Mohawks. And I know this isn't the guy who any of you really may know, but Nick Kurtz is a player for Wake Forest. Yep. Again, not on the national level, but I've talked to him. He's the only college baseball player I've ever talked to. And this guy hits absolute missiles. Now, mm -hmm. I know that they haven't done great in ACC plays in the national power, but he's got great flow. He's got great bat flips. I like the kid, and Nick Kurtz is my guy. And when I go to Amsterdam, they have a great program there. They have guys from the SEC galore, and they have guys from small schools who do really well, too. So I'm excited to see what I get over the summer there. Andrew, I, I know you want to chime in. Okay, I got fine. a question for One you. quick one. Would you rather have a hockey team or a college baseball team here at Syracuse? I'd rather have baseball. Honestly, because I'm a bigger baseball fan than I am a hockey fan, the women's hockey team is unbelievable. Yep. So they've got a great program going there. We've got no baseball at all. So let's get a baseball team in the building, get them over at Sky Top, give Anthony maybe two teams of cover in one given day. Couldn't agree more. We've talked a lot about sleepers already, but Adam, if there's one sleeper we've left out really quickly, can you touch on one? It's Rutgers. I gave them to you. Okay. It's Rutgers. I already, I already slipped them to you. All right. Andrew, who you got? Uh, it's a team that just kind of – entered into the top 25, and I talked about them already, Virginia Tech. The team can just destroy the baseball. As I said, they got seven guys batting above 300. I think that's a team that contends for the ACC tournament title. That's a team that contends to get to Omaha because they're rounding into form at the right time, and that's what it's all about in the college baseball tournament and the college basketball tournament. It's not about who's the best team in the first two months of the season. It's about who can play their best baseball come tournament time. And that's what the best coaches in college baseball do is they get their players ready come college baseball tournament. I like Notre Dame. I mean, we've already talked about them a little bit. They're eight and four on the road, six and one at neutral sites, which yep. I know is kind of odd. But hey, down the stretch, maybe that could be helpful. I think they've got the talent. They haven't played as much as some of the other teams. I think they're a few games behind. It's baseball, so obviously I haven't had the chance to really see them as much. I like Notre Dame a lot down the stretch, and in a really, as you mentioned, deep ACC. Yep. But we're not talking sleepers now. We're talking national champions. Adam. Who's going to be on the mountaintop? All right, look, taking Tennessee is boring, and I, I really hope neither of you guys take Tennessee. I already told um, you they're not making the College World Series at so all. So clearly he's not. Um, it's boring and unnecessary. So I'll be taking what I think uh, is the second-best team in college baseball. Give me the Virginia Cavaliers. Uh, balanced teams win championships, and I mentioned they are a balanced team of good hitting and good pitching. I mean, I have just season stats here just galore. The only thing amiss with Virginia, they can hit, they can pitch, they can feel. The only thing that's amiss, and it comes in their pitching, the control is not there all the time. Their uh, strikeout to walk ratio is not great at 279, um, and they've given up a lot of walks. Yeah. They've given up 132 walks, and that is Ridiculous. That's a problem you see a lot in college bat baseball as opposed to the MLB is just control issues with these guys coming out trying to throw 100 as opposed to throwing strikes. Well, that's the thing is I, I can tell by looking at these stats, these guys are flamethrowers. Yeah. Um, but I'll be honest, I think the offense can cover their uh, pitching woes. And seriously, if they get just a little bit of control at the right time, I mean, Virginia is just going to walk through. Andrew? I like the Stanford Cardinal. I talked about them earlier. That's a team out of the Pac-12. They went to the College World Series last year. They're always well coached and playing really solid fundamental baseball come tournament time. I think they get back to Omaha. I think they get back to the National Championship Series. But I'm not taking them to win, and I agree with you. Oh, the, ACC, the ACC is where it's at. I hope Jacob Morris is watching because I'm taking the Notre Dame Fighting Irish they to win it. it all this season. Wow, so not even a sleeper in your mind. Nope, not even a sleeper. This team's top ten in the country right now, and I got the Fighting Irish to take home a trophy to South Bend, and who would have thought baseball? I, I, was, I was sitting here last night uh, when, I, when I did uh, my national championship pick, and I had uh, I went, I'm going to take two teams. I'm going to take the Cavaliers, and I'm going to take the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Yeah. Um, and I went, ah, let's, let's only pick one. That's more fun. I wouldn't be shocked if those two teams meet in the College World Notre Series. Notre Dame fans, I got to tell you, Link Jarrett, he's your guy. He's your coach. 
He took you to Super Regionals last year for the first time in a while, almost beat the team that in Mississippi State who won the tournament. He's got you on the stage again. It wasn't a fluke last year. After losing your best hitter, you're still top ten in the country. you got to pay the man because there were rumors about him going to LSU last year. Mm. If you're the fighting Irish, you got to give him his money and get him to stay in Notre Dame to build up a program there. But i got the Irish taking it all this year. I've got an ACC two team, too. I've got Miami, though. There's a uh, reason why they've jumped up from eight to two in the rankings. People are respecting them. We've talked in experience, but... Heck, you know, I think they're Hurricanes. They've got the team. Made a deep run in March Madness. I think they can make a deep run this year. Ian Nicholas, Andrew Selliver, Adam Cohen, No Pulp Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoyed it.